now I want to talk about Diane Mott. I met Diane some years back. She was a Fulbright scholar who went to Muslim communities, and she fell in love with Muslims when she went over there. And they fell in love with her. Then in 2016, she heard of the Muslim travel ban, and she was outraged. She called her friend at Harvard, and she asked her friend, who's working to improve the public understanding of Muslims? Her friend said, talk to MPAC. So she called us, and I drove uh, to meet her. I flew uh, to uh, Atlanta and drove to Athens, Georgia to meet her, and we talked, and I said, Diane, your story needs to be told in churches. So we found an evangelical church near Atlanta, and there was a friend, John Stallsmith, a pastor there, who invited us in. Diane told her story. I spoke about anti-Muslim Trump's, uh, 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 anti-Muslim tropes, not Trump's. Um, <laughs> sorry for that Freudian slip. Um, yeah, no, I'm sure. No, I'm not. I don't know. <laughs> Interpret it as you wish. Um, so I spoke about the tropes, and Imam Plemen El Amin talked about the Quran. The people loved the forum. One person came to us and said, you know, I use anti-Muslim tropes to get elected officials, uh, public officials elected. I realize how wrong I am, and I ask for your forgiveness. We embraced, and I looked at Diane, I said, Diane, this is God's work. We have to make this nationwide, and she agreed. Diane died two years ago during COVID, and then we got a call from her estate saying that she left $440,000 for MPAC to continue this work. And Diane is not Muslim, but may God reward her for what she has done for peacemaking and for our dem democracy. Uh, the program is called Mustard Seed. In the Quran, Mustard Seed is referred to by Luqman, the sage who tells his son, uh, no matter what you do, how little it is, if God wills it, he can bring it to light. And in the Bible, Mustard Seed is used when Jesus said, no matter how much faith you have, how little faith you have, even if it's an ounce of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. And so it is that bridge that we're using to do peacemaking. And I want to introduce our colleague in this peacemaking effort, in this endeavor. His name is Andrew Richards. He works for uh, a, a program in dealing with hunger. Uh, he's also a member of Rock Harbor Church, a member of the evangelical community. I've met him a few times, but I consider him a brother in faith. So please welcome Andrew Richards. Salam alaikum. My Arabic, that's the extent of it, but I'm very grateful to be with you. I think um, Salam invited me to be a part of this because I was a very average Uber driver. The last time we met, it was in Nashville, actually, we were at an event together, and I had the pleasure of, of driving him to the airport, uh, and we got to talk about uh, things that are very real in our lives, our family, our, our passions, our desires, our hopes, uh, and he, in turn, invites me to this banquet, so thank you. <laughs> it's a joy. I think it's critical, the work that we are endeavoring to do together. It's lofty, isn't it? These ideals of, of America and justice and equality and peace. Uh, these ideals that I have had the privilege of teaching about in churches over the last 20 years of walking with people, traveling internationally, uh, helping people understand what it means to live out our faith. Um, that could be lofty ideals, but it's what we practice that shows what we actually believe. And so thank you for being uh, a, a community of practice alongside of us. Um, peace is, is a critical part of the work that we're doing together, and that peace is a repair. So it's aptly named this film, The Healer, because there's a restoration, a repair that needs to continue to happen, not only in our own lives, but in our communities. And so it's, it's a privilege to be a part of that process. And it's also fascinating that the storytellers are the ones that bring us to the table, right? The poets, the prophets, the artists, 
They have a way of, of getting around our defenses and allowing us to see the commonalities, allowing us to see the, the, the similar desires, the, the fears that we might share, even against uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, our common humanity, which is critical. What I'm hoping for, not only with this film or these discussions, are, are these types of real, authentic ways of engaging as neighbors. Uh, in the Christian faith, we, we say we follow Jesus, and Jesus says he would lay his life down for his brother. Uh, the, uh, we, we love those that we would lay our life down for, but it's the person who would lay their life down for an enemy or to love an enemy that actually shows this restorative healing power uh, of the love of God. And so it's my hope that as we watch a film and, and not only just engage in a discussion, but we get to the human issues that are facing each of us and we can seek to understand uh, a different perspective than one we might not have heard before. And that happens around tables, am I right? That happens in, in sharing the things that matter most. And so thank you so much for, for welcoming me here. Uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to walking alongside of uh, Salam and MPAC and, and friends in our community as we build and repair and restore our communities because we do need it, don't we? So many blessings tonight. Thank you.